Hey everybody, it's Stephanie Old World Gamer along with Nakuso, Paul, uh, the One Z Striker, Zach, and Six Sev Cyrus of the Engage Gamers, Steve. And today we are doing a podcast on uh, the potential of Microsoft buying Mojang slash, oh my god, they're buying Minecraft <laughs> to do a lot of people, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, Paul has uh, everything... Um, written down there in topic form so we're going to try and attempt to cover as many topics that would uh i guess be important to to the whole i guess situation so uh i'll let you take it from there paul all right so what is up everyone the first topic that we're going to be starting off with is what does it mean if microsoft buys mojang hmm well, I mean, obviously, like I said, I mean, the first thing that's going to pop to almost everyone's mind when you say Mojang is, oh, they're buying Minecraft. But there are other games as well, so. Um, but, yeah, I think, obviously, the biggest, I guess, prospect there is the whole Minecraft, the Minecraft community, and, I guess, the potential of them getting that alone. And what are they going to do because of it now, if they do get it? Well, some people think they, they just want Minecraft for the popularity. That's one topic that has been brought up. Mm -hmm. And uh, they could do a lot of good with it, or they could wreck it. I mean, that's... Well, it's like with any company buying any other company, for, for that matter. I mean, that's the same thing with, like, Disney buying pretty much everything. Star Wars <laughs> is as the most recent and example. But and yes. Marvel, they, I mean, they own everything now, dude. I mean, Disney's looking after all the big movie stuff that people are, you know, wanting to look at. So, I mean, it's like Microsoft is trying to move in more into, you know, grabbing more of the gaming community as, as a whole because there are a lot of people that love that game. Well, it's a matter if they were to get that popularity, then they would be quite popular, especially after what they were trying to do with the Xbox One before they released. They lost a lot of popularity doing that. What was that? You know, uh, what was it? You know, whenever you kind of brought over to a friend's house to play on their Xbox One, mm -hmm. you would have to pay a fee in order to oh. be able to play it on there. Or if you... <laughs> Or if you kind of had to have your friends on your friends list for about, like, I don't know, 30 days, I believe it was, in order to be able to do anything with the friend. Oh, my God. That that would have been bad, yeah. Yeah, that's a little bit limiting, because, yeah, did, weren't they also talking one time about, like, oh, let's just make all the games digital. That way we don't have to make games anymore, and it'll be, you know, preventing people from buying games. And all the games are like, yeah, but then we can't resell that $60 game and get thirty dollars credit on another game down the road. You know what I mean? Like, because I know that was a big yeah. thing for a lot of people. It's just the resell factor for that, you know, type of well, thing. Not only that, they were all supposed to do it. So if you're playing on a friend's console, you can only play for about an hour. Then you would have to reconfirm that you still playing. You're on your account. Jesus! Wow, that's horrible. That would have been really bad. <laughs> They also wanted to play Big Brother with it. They wanted to watch you the whole time you were playing on the system. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. With the Kinect, they were, where the camera's always on. Yep. Okay, that's that's that. You just creepy. sit there with not a stitch on, just you know, playing <laughs> Halo, and they're just like, man, you, you see how he grabs his balls every time he shoots at you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like why would you need that? Like that's that's a huge invasion of privacy. Like you know, like again, just going to another like extreme situation. You're there playing a game, your girlfriend comes in, something happens in regards to you know, something sexual. You forgot that you're playing your game that you connects on, so what? Someone has the potential of being able to just watch you, you know, do whatever you're doing, like it just does not sound like a good idea. Like, whoever thought that would be a good idea? Not only that, the Xbox on one sort of say, you know, mentioned about the Xbox, and my name just turned on by spell. You're like, what the hell? I didn't want to play Xbox. What is going on with your connection, sir? You are, like, jumping everywhere what? for me. Yeah, uh, I'm having the same problem. When you're talking, it, you're jumping, like, from one part of a sentence to another, and it didn't make sense. <laughs> Just say something for a second. 
Hello. <laughs> okay, now you're. That was really weird. Dude. Yeah, it was. I don't know. I thought it was just probably a lag spike for me. Whoa. Oh, okay. And then it did it again for me, but that's just me. Uh, but anyways, um, I guess we got a little bit off topic there, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, there could be good things. There could be bad things. I mean, Microsoft obviously hasn't made too many mistakes in their gaming, you know, prospects so far. Just for the fact that they were going to do those things, but they didn't. You know, they they brought up the whole situation first, seen how everyone handled it, and then made the decision instead of just saying like, "Oh, well, everyone hates it. Let's just fucking do it anyways." You know, what? like <laughs> they just you know they they put it out there, let people kind of know like this is the direction we want to go in. What do you think? And I think that's a smart thing that they're doing that. I mean, they're obviously a big company for a reason. They're not stupid. Well, but that brings up the question of what they've done with companies in the past. Uh, is it Rareware that we yeah, Rare. to discuss? Yeah, Rare. They were bought by them, but I think at the time that they were bought, that was more or less they didn't have time to look after a new company. They just wanted to incorporate it underneath them as like the same thing like uh, they probably used to do back in the old days, like... I think it was Konami had Ultra, I think, as their sister company. So that that way, once they made, like, their limit on games or something, they could make them over there in their sister company and they wouldn't get, like, penalties for it or something. I believe that's how it went, something like that. Uh, I thought I've read something about that once upon a time. But I think they just wanted to kind of grab them up because they thought they had potential there of scooping up, like, you know, uh, Banjo-Kazooie, you know, that franchise, and, well... As you know, they kind of fucked that up. A lot of people weren't happy with the game they put out for 360. I just took and had it to death. Mm hmm. That's horrible. Also, what conquers bad for a day. Did they? They didn't even try to do anything with that after, did they? They remade the game for the Xbox, mm. but they censored it a lot, and that uh, kind of pissed people off. Which doesn't make sense because Xbox doesn't seem like the type of company that has to censor anything. You well, know once what I mean? again, like, you're buying a rated game. The curse word should be in the game. Yes. I mean, if Nintendo had it on an N64 game, like, if Nintendo could do it, uh, Microsoft, I think you're fine to do it. And yeah. Nintendo's mainly, like, you know, makes children's games now. Exactly. Well, I mean, an Xbox is all about, I mean, look at Halo. Here, shoot and kill stuff. But hey, don't swear. Don't let a squirrel swear, because that's bad. That doesn't make sense. Why would you... <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? Like, oh god. Anyways, on the other hand, though, oh sorry, Zach, if you can go. Oh, ahead. it's also like you know, it's like they hardly you know censor anything. It's you know, whenever you're playing Call of Duty, you hear people curse all the time. It's normal for people now. Exactly. Like I said, killing GTA. <laughs> like, isn't that worse than swearing? I mean. I think we had a discussion about that earlier, Steve, where we were saying, like, yeah, hurting or, like, doing something that's disturbing to somebody is probably a lot, you know, it's going to wear in their mind a lot more than a little bit of swearing or something. What so. I was saying was, is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is a game I played recently for my channel. Not that I'm trying to put that out there, but uh, yeah. for context, um, you can walk up behind a guy and cut him in half, and he'll never know it. And you can see the body parts fly apart, blood spurting out, and then the body laying on the ground before it disappears, because that's what the game does. It makes it disappear eventually. Yes. That's, that's going to wear on someone more than someone saying the F word. Someone saying, fuck! Yeah, that's one second is gone. More, you know, something else hop happens, whether it's more commentary from the game or more action within the game. And then you forget that there was ever, ever any swearing. You know exactly. what I mean? Like it's not like, oh man, the five minutes ago when he said fucked, I mean that really. I don't know how I feel about playing this game anymore. I mean that's really <laughs> bad. I mean no one ever thinks that way. <laughs> Whereas like, yeah, Jesus, that was pretty gruesome when I plunged that sword in the dude's skull, and you, you know like <laughs> it's just such a huge difference. Yeah. And anyways, I'm we're kind of getting a little bit off topic there, but. I don't think that Microsoft will, will be stupid about their purchase. The, I mean, they're obviously going to take their time with, with, you know, how they handle it. Well, on the flip side, Minecraft has already got a pretty good setup. All they have to do is follow the formula that, that Mo Yang leaves with it. Yeah, but then you have to also think that Microsoft is a huge company that knows how to make money and turn things into more money. That's true. 
So I'm sure there'll be little things that'll be changed, like there'll probably be DLC that, oh, you can get like a whole pack of hats for five dollars. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, and you know what? That they're already the doing that for the Xbox. Version. See, it's like here, get the skin. For, like, I didn't even know that, and that's what I'm talking about. And there's kids out there that are gonna be like. Oh, golly gee whiz, I gotta get those hats. It's like, why? <laughs> what are the hats gonna do for it's you? Also, it's also the same with texture packs. You're just better off buying it on the PC and get exactly. the texture packs for free. Yeah. <laughs> but not only uh, that, you can make your own. You can make small changes. You, you can... There's just so much more you can do, but... I just... I, I don't... I'm hoping that they're not gonna do something stupid like that with it, because that would be horrible. One like thing that... Like community? <laughs> what was that, Zach? Like, in the... Oh. Well, yeah, you, we just lost you there, dude. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I... Wow, that's terrible. Yeah, usually yeah. Skype hates Zach. I don't know why. Yeah. As soon as we get into multiple calls, it seems Zach has some issues there. Something else uh, that, to talk about and think about, though, uh, Microsoft could use C++ or a different um, code to rewrite Minecraft and make oh. it more stable. Uh, I, I doubt they'd do that. If anything, they'd probably just employ their own, uh, Java studio or, you know, set up whoever they got going for their own stuff, and they would probably just get them to fix a lot of the bugs themselves, because I'm not saying that Mojang doesn't have the, the capability, but I would say Microsoft has a lot more employees that they could just say, yeah, take a hundred of these guys and just go and do this and fix it, and then mm -hmm. tell us when you're done. And that's it. And they, they have the 100 people to just go and do it blindly and not have to worry about You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. Whereas Mojang doesn't have at that you know as many employees. They probably don't have you know the time and, and the manpower to just go mm -hmm. through every single bit of code. I mean, look at the biggest update that they just gave us with 1.8. I mean, that was an extreme update, at least in my mind it was. They added a lot in that update. And... That was just with their small team. So imagine what new updates with Microsoft could be like. Because people will look at that and say, okay, Jungle Temples. I mean, if you look at them as a whole, you go in, there's a couple of traps, there's a little lever puzzle thing there. You can break the tripwire, you can steal all the stuff out of the things that fire off the arrows, the droppers or whatever they're called. And you go and you know where all the chests are. There's not really much to them, whereas someone from Microsoft, they can say, okay, let's get a team of 10 people who just go and work specifically on new things we want to add to the jungle zone and into those temples. And we'll have that. Same thing with desert temples. Like, okay, some stuff can spawn in there, but more or less in the daytime, you can dig down. As long as you don't land on a pressure plate, steal stuff, build up, you're done. There's not really much, you know... I mean, it, you, you get a decent payout for little, uh, uh, I guess, danger for... They should have more in it, is what I'm saying. And they just they, don't have the time to work on that all the time, I don't think. They could probably actually add a couple more dangerous mobs that you have to fight. Yeah, make the temples bigger. I mean, why are the temples only... I mean, what? The one in the temple, I think you can go upstairs. There's a middle where you come in, and then you go downstairs. That's it. The only thing that's important is about what's in the middle of the temple. That's mm. about it. That's the mm. only thing you can go in there for. Yep. It also and, and, depends, though. What's that? It also depends because a lot of people like Minecraft being that simple and would maybe dislike it if it got too complicated because mm. that's the kind of appeal of Minecraft. It kind of it's very simple, at least the vanilla without mods. Yes, I agree with you on that. So I guess it would be important that um, Microsoft doesn't go too crazy and keeps a balance. Well, they probably also have the ability to be able to say, okay. Here's an option. Turn off this stuff. Turn off, you know, uh, m temple mobs. Or, you know, turn off uh, structures spawning in these biomes. Or whatever. I mean, they can put in those options. That's well, actually, there are all. options to get rid of all that stuff. Oh, I know. And that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying to just put it into regular options. Not in, like, a text file or something. But just in the options itself where you can just go in and say, okay, let's take off... This, 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 and this for these, you know, specific biomes and be able to change it that way. And also going back to the C++, they have that for the Xbox version. Hmm. So I wonder would they convert it 
it would be better because Java's really unstable, to be honest. It is, uh, and that's why I brought that up. At least, Sorry, am, am, well, <coughs> the thing is with Java is that Java is supposed to be more cross-platform friendly. And that's why I brought it up earlier. Will Microsoft, if they go and do it as a C++ thing, they could easily say, okay, PlayStation, no more. You guys can't touch my, uh, Minecraft anymore. Stop making it. This is ours now. Stop. Or, you know, there's probably a contract where they can make the original one that they have for PS, for the PlayStation, but they probably won't, you know, they could say, okay, for, as a, I guess, as an example, for Minecraft 2, I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but if that was going to happen, they could say, okay, well, PlayStation, you can't use it anymore. Macintosh, you can't use it anymore. We're going to make sure that no one else gets any licensing for it. Only uh, Windows computers and, and, you know, Xbox can use it. And I'm not saying that that would be a great thing, but, I mean, they could easily do that. And that's what, you know, at doing it with C++, that they could potentially do that. And I'm not saying it wouldn't make it more stable, because it probably would. But, you know, it, what direction are they going to go in? Are they going to keep it for themselves, or are they going to share it? Well, this article on GameSpot says, Microsoft won't wipe Minecraft from PS4 if BIO is secured, sources claim. So, you know, that can change any time. But from the sources, it says that the PS3 and the PS4 will remain the same, regardless. Right. Well, yeah, it would have to, because they've already had a, you know, a contract saying that, like, Mojang here is making, you know, giving you the, the licensing and the use of, ma of having this Minecraft game for your console. So, therefore, anything that happens after that, that doesn't affect the PlayStation thing, unless it's in the contract itself. You know what I mean? Like, unless they say, if Mojang is ever bought by another company and they feel that they don't want, you know, you having the game anymore, then you can't do that anymore. I mean, that's the only way they could do that. And I can't see any big gaming company agreeing to such drastic measures. I mean, that would be, I don't know, crazy, I think, in my mind, anyways. Well, that's one of the things that we're going to see in the coming weeks if the deal does, in fact, go through as planned. Well, again... With how slow my, my Microsoft does some of those things, they might, you know, bring up some of those those, those points and then say, okay, what do you guys think? And then if everyone's going to, you know, shit their pants over it, then they'll probably say, okay, no, we won't do that then. We'll do whatever makes you happy because they are, I mean, they've already got, you know, they know what they're doing. So, I mean, they know that, you know, make the people happy and you'll get them buying your stuff. Yeah. You know. They did that with the Xbox 360, like, or one, excuse me, like we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. What is the next topic on the list? The next topic is kind of kind of coincides with what we just talked about. What happens to the modding community and also Bucket? That's, That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, for all those modders out there, they might have a chance of a lifetime where Microsoft might say, hey, you make a really good mod. How about if we, you know, give you some contract work where, you know, you have six months to make this mod as a DLC content for us and we'll pay you. I mean, that gives more jobs to modders out there who know what they're doing with this already. Again, referring back to the whole point of why would you change the code when so many people already know how to, you know, use it and change it. It's interesting that you mentioned that, though, because uh, Dr. Zark... Uh, mm -hmm. who you're familiar with from the More Creatures mod back yeah. in the day, Mojang actually hired him to write the code for the real horses and the update that they put horses in. I say real horses as if modding isn't real, but you, you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and the code is completely different, so um, I, I don't know <laughs> if that code belongs specifically <coughs> to the group of mod makers that helped him do that or if it belongs solely to him and he had to write something different for Mojang, but um, certainly we will see something like that, I think. It just, it makes sense that they follow a lot of the things that Mojang was already doing with Minecraft. Yeah. And that's also a really good thing you said, Stefan, about having modders being paid. That could be a niche for Microsoft to say, all right, so for every update, we'll pick maybe one or a few mods from different people, so they'll get paid. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be interesting to see that? Well, I mean, think of how much they'll refine their mods then. People will be like, okay, 
if Microsoft are actually paying people for their mods, let's put a little bit more time and effort into the one that we already have and make it as best we can, present it as best we can, and show, you know, Microsoft what it can do. I mean, the bucket plugins, I mean, there's people who make games for servers. That's what plugins are. That's what all those mini games are. It's just plugins for uh, on the servers that are made in bucket. And, I mean... Look of all the great games out there. I mean, all the different versions of Hunger Games. There was Hide and Seek, the way that was made. Spleef. Uh, was it that game we were playing? Murder. All the kit PvP stuff. I mean, there's so many different mini games and other games out there that, again, I, I find it hard for Microsoft to ever want to change the code just for that alone. They have the potential of getting all the employees for content for years and years already there. They're just waiting. So, I mean... Again, like it just opens up a huge opportunity for all those people who are out there spending all their you know free time making these mods, making these plugins, to actually make a living off of it for, instead of just doing it for solely for fun. And I'm not saying that those people would just you know dedicate themselves just for the money, but they would probably make their mods much better and with a lot less bugs. It makes sense, but on the other hand, Minecraft or Microsoft could say. Minecraft is now unmoddable from That's here true. on. But they, if they look at the entire community as a whole, I don't think that they'll do that anytime soon. It doesn't make sense, but, I mean, Microsoft could be extremely conservative. We still don't know what the terms of the agreement will be, what their plans are, you know, going into buying it. I, mm -hmm. We can speculate all day, but I think it's... it's you could probably say that they're going to do what's best for the game. Exactly. I'd say they'll do what's best for the community and what gets them, yeah. you know, again, loved by the community. Because, you know, as long as they're working towards what people want, then people are going to keep getting that. They're going to keep wanting it. They're going to keep buying it. Yep. For all we know, Mo um, Microsoft could just say, we just want to slap our name on Minecraft so we'll get, you know, recognition, payment, probably more sales for their consoles and whatever, and you can do whatever you want. Mm hmm That's true. They could also just say, okay, the other part of it is, we like uh, I was reading one of the articles, we'll make movies and we'll make more toys and merchandising. And that way we'll make all the money through that. And, you know, Mojang can still get royalties on the side or something like that, whatever, you know, kind of deal they come up with but there's so many just different opportunities that they can go with that's true uh but with the whole movies thing as as a youtuber i'd be worried that they uh tighten copyright law and that was kind of something that we wanted to talk about later but the movie thing came up earlier so i thought i would mention that as we go along here well i don't know with the whole movie copyright the only thing that i think that they would really have a copyright deal with it is probably exact characters. And even that, they probably wouldn't... Like, I, I don't think anyone on YouTube has to worry about it kind of thing. Yeah, because, I see what you're saying. Because, I mean, why, why would they? I mean, you've already got maps that are made after The Simpsons, SpongeBob SquarePants, <laughs> uh, Lord of the Rings. I mean, these are all big, you know, shows and stuff like that, and they obviously don't say anything about it. I mean... Why would you go through the trouble of harassing mostly kids because they're enjoying, you know, their popular TV or series or movie series in a game for free? I mean, that's just giving them more publicity. Like, oh, you know, a 12-year-old who doesn't know, you know, what's the Lord of the Rings? I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's the movies that came before The Hobbit? Oh, maybe I should tell my mom to buy those now so I can see those because... I like The Hobbit, and obviously this Lord of the Rings stuff in Minecraft is fun, so now I'm going to go and buy these game, or these movies. And then, there you go, Lord of the Rings just made more money. <laughs> so, I mean, why would you go through the trouble of, you know, trying to harass a, a game company when they're giving you free publicity, more or less, to That's... millions and millions of potential customers? I mean, Again, it's free advertising. <laughs> that's true. It goes back to we don't know how conservative they're going to be, but I still think overall that they're going to make good choices. But you still got to wonder at this point. We don't know yet. And that's, yeah, I know. That's and they the could be just thing. lax about it. Like Paul said, they might just yeah. say, I'm going to slap my name on it and just leave it. That would be so <laughs> cool. But we don't know yet. Uh, yeah. What is the next topic? 
Yeah, most of this is going to be speculation anyways. I mean... That's true. That, that's the best we can do. Mm-hmm. Before we move on to the next topic, Zach, do you have anything you want to say? Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to set something up. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you're, if you're still having issues there or not. It sounds like you're fine or not. Yeah. Yeah, I was just looking into what was causing the lag. I think I found it. Okay, best call. I just didn't want to say anything since it would probably <laughs> show up lagging. I would end up being a robot. <laughs> it's okay. We understand. But, uh, yeah, what's the... Uh, uh, going on to the next subject, as Steve was saying, mm-hmm. kind of somewhat what Steve was saying, what does it mean for YouTubers, and especially us, if Microsoft does buy Mojang, would that put some copyrights on Minecraft? Or would they do that since... Honestly, YouTube is where Minecraft really got big. Mm. Yeah, that is true. Um, I don't know. I mean, if you think about it, like, w- discussion we were having earlier, what games do they have copyrights against now? Like, are, are there any games that, like, I know that uh, Sega has Shining Force. Like, uh, a lot of people who play Shining Force usually get copyrights immediately because they don't want anyone playing that because apparently they're going to be making a new game soon or something. At some point or another, that's the story I've heard as well. I mean, and okay, I understand, but I mean, at the same time, it's like, I'm sorry that I'm playing a game to show people what the game was like so that they can like the new one. Uh, that, again, that's the, the kind of advertising that I don't understand why video game come. I mean, and not only that, but... They could do the same thing that Nintendo pretty much... I'm pretty sure they're still doing it, which was, oh, you're playing our games? Okay, we'll put our commercials on it. That's it. Weren't they... Wasn't Nintendo once upon a time ago trying to get revenue from people's videos? Well, yeah, they wanted to get 100% of the revenue, but I think afterwards what they said was, okay, instead of doing that, why don't we just leave these people alone, let them play whatever the hell they want, and we'll just put our you know ads on it so that... We're getting all the advertising on these videos. No other companies are. And then therefore, you know, we get all the ads and any money that comes in because of that, you know, they get it regardless kind of thing. So, I mean, we'll still get money for ads as well, you know, for AdSense and stuff like that. But Nintendo still gets the bonuses from it as well and being able to put their ads as, I guess, a primary on the videos that they want them on. Makes a lot of sense. Well, I guess individually for me, I see it like uh, Disney. (laughs) (laughs) Disney buying up Star Wars. They have the capital to do what's right with it. They're already recording that seventh movie. As far as Mm -hmm. that goes, they're doing the right thing. So in my mind, they could do the right thing. They probably will. But right now it's scary because we don't know the details because we've been left out of the conversation because it's been done behind doors. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what you guys feel about it, but that's just me. What do you mean? You mean Minecraft, the whole Mojang deal thing? Yeah, yeah, the whole deal thing. Well, I mean, it's none of our business anyway. I mean, yes, obviously, to an extent, it is a a small fraction because we're the people who make it matter. I mean, we're we're the game players. We're the ones who want to buy the game. So, of course, our opinions matter. But when it comes down to it, I mean, you know, these guys who are running a company, like I was saying, they made, like, what is it, $100 million last year? Yeah. That's a good, decent amount of money. But if... Minecraft comes or uh, Microsoft comes along and says, "Hey, here's two billion dollars. We'll look after you for the next twenty years in that one deal alone." That's that's their lifetime. They're I mean, they're, those guys are what in their thirties or forties, maybe. I think something like that. So I mean, that's right up until retirement. Boom, done. And that's not like chump change either. That's like good. You know, rich people money. Like, that. if we had something like that, we'd be good from, like, you know, 18 to 100. No problem on the, you know, the lifestyle that we're used to. So, I mean, you know, there, it's just so much money. I mean, why wouldn't you do that? I mean, you can say, like, you know, I, I made this game. I'm proud of what I've done. But now I don't have to worry about it anymore. I've, I've got this big deal, and, you know, I'm still going to be known for it. I'm still going to be in history books about, you know, being known as the guy who made this game. But... Now I can retire and be happy, spend time with my family, instead of worrying about a video game all the time, and worrying about all this, you know, copyright stuff, and, you know, all this other, you know, uh, uh, law bullshit that you have to worry about with being a company to, uh, to begin with, and just be able to relax, and, and, and like I said, enjoy your family. I mean, <laughs> why, who wouldn't want to do that? 
I mean, most people, that's what your goal is in life, is to just be able to, you know, have a good, you know, life with your own family. So, I mean, that's all they're trying to do, so no one can really get mad at them for wanting to do that. Not at all, but it's a different page out of Notch's playbook. He didn't seem uh, like the kind of guy to take big corporate money like we were discussing a bit earlier, if someone wants to elaborate more on that. Was it Paul who brought that up? I can't remember. Say that one Can't more time, Steve. Um, the whole thing about how uh, um, Notch didn't want <coughs> corporate money and how he's like a hero of um, indie games. That's Oh, yeah. He said if the deal goes through, he's going to leave, like just leave Microsoft and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I know a while ago he said he would never sell um you know like minecraft and all that but when it comes to two billion dollars you can change your mind really quickly Mm -hmm. i guess yeah if someone offered me two billion (laughs) dollars to stop what i'm doing right now and not do anything i would say yes please no problem but you know what here's the thing with uh, i think a lot of people don't look at in regards to like having a lot of money or winning the lottery or something but even if you win the lottery and you have tons and tons of money, aren't you going to get bored? Because all the people that you know, they still have to work. They didn't win the lottery, you did. So eventually you're going to get bored enough that, you know, you're not going to want to travel alone. You're not going to, I mean, yes, you'll have your significant other, but I mean, to a point, even, you know, you've got to spend time with other people. So, I mean, eventually you're going to probably look to, okay, I'm going to start a business doing this so that I'm still making money from it. It's not a waste of time, but I'll have something to fill up my day still. Because, I mean, I'm sorry, I wouldn't be able to watch TV for, you know, 18 or 20 hours a day, like for 50% of the year. I I just wouldn't be able to do it. I think it would go out of my mind. I'd have to find something to do other than that. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's a lot of it's in human nature wanting to be productive as well and, you know, make something of yourself. <laughs> That's kind of what I was going to say. I think it would be in Notch's nature to start from scratch and make a new game that he he could really just work on without having to worry about the whole company thing. That would be actually kind of cool because he'd have startup money, boom, right there, good to go. Yep. And and just do whatever else he wants to do. And it might not even have anything to do with video games. He might go and say, okay, let's go work with, you know, some kind of peripheral device like Oculus Rift, which... I believe they're being bought by someone now, like Amazon or something, aren't they? I don't know if it was Amazon. I thought it was or Google not. that was buying. Or was them. it Google? It do- Anyways, it doesn't matter either way. But I mean, you know, he, he could go and do whatever the hell he wants. He could go and say, I- "I'm just gonna go make new Tupperware containers for you know the 2020s." So then people are like, "Oh wow, look, these Tupperware containers have zippers." Or, I don't know, just anything <laughs> he wants, really. I mean. <laughs> Bring Tupperware into the space age. <laughs> That's right, zippers. <laughs> Apparently, Oculus Rift was bought by Facebook. Yes, that's oh, right. Oh, God, yes. Oh, God. I forgot about that. Yeah. What? The, that, it it that's doesn't make for, any sense. That would be a whole <laughs> other podcast. Because I'm sure all of us would have lots of really nice things to say about Facebook buying a gaming device Potentially a gaming device. I don't even know if they're doing anything with it. I haven't heard any news since it was bought. So they might have bought it just to set it on the shelf. Mark Zuckerberg is saying, Oh, I'm going to make a farm bill just for the Oculus Rift so you can watch your cow shit in real time. <laughs> Fuck. You know, oh. that's what he was thinking. God. But uh, if we've covered all our topics, this might be a good time to... Did we cover our topics this, Steve? You didn't even check. You're just going to try. I don't know. You're just going to end it here? Right, Steve. Where where you got to be? I was asking a question, (laughs) you guys. God. (laughs) Anyways, what is the next topic there? We mostly cover all the topics. We have other topics like how could it affect us when we make Minecraft videos, which kind of turn into the whole YouTube thing. Mm. And pros of and well, pros and cons we sort of discussed already if Microsoft bought Mojang. Well, I guess as a YouTube thing, 
I don't think it has any, they don't have anything to worry about, but something I did mention earlier was that it would be funny if Microsoft started their own channel network so that they could grab all the Minecrafters and put them into one network, <laughs> which would probably net them lots and lots of money just through the advertising alone. So It would also help those YouTubers. It, it would be an extremely beneficial symbiotic business relationship. What do you think? Let us know down below in the comments. <laughs> Go, Steph. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I guess... If you uh, order now, you can get this nice towel. Oh, uh, I am not... I am <laughs> not holding myself responsible. That was Zach who said about the towel. If anyone needs the towel, you know who to message and bug and harass. That's so right. If, you, if you're really looking for a towel, bug him. <laughs> not me. He's going to open uh, a towel store. That. No, it's too late. You're going to open a towel store. Jesus. And oh, not none on. of those cheap ones either. Like, you don't go to Walmart and get an $8 towel when you see a $15 one there. It's all for $9. Perfectly good. You're going to get a $15 towel, not, not an $8 or $9 one. Anyways, yeah, this is probably a good place to uh, probably end the podcast. Uh, let us know what you guys think about uh, any of the topics that we talked about down below. We went through quite a bit there, and I, I'm sure there was a lot of stuff that uh, we might have been incorrect on, myself included, mostly. Um, but, uh, yeah, let us know what your thoughts are on it, uh, anything that we might have missed, any information we, that we might not know about, and, uh, you know, perhaps we might be able to bring it up in the next podcast. But, uh, as always, thank you all for listening. Uh, I'm Stefan, the Old World Gamer, along with uh, Nakuso, Paul. Uh, the onesie striker Zach and Steve six of Cyrus of the Engage Gamers, and we will see you all soon for another podcast soon, hopefully. Please, I hope. Maybe sounds like a plan to me, <laughs> gentlemen. Okay, see you guys later. Later, everyone. Bye, everybody. Oh.